Hey Canucks fans, the Canucks are on the ice and they're reunited and it feels so good. Okay, now you know why I don't sing in any of my videos. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. This is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Monday, January the 4th. This is where you get Canucks insight that's positive and timely. Hey everyone, you can tell I'm in a good mood. Otherwise, I wouldn't have started my vlog off by singing. And yeah, I'm in a good mood because the Canucks, they opened training camp yesterday, but they officially opened training camp. They're actually on the ice for the first time this morning. I got my handy dandy new Canuck clay cup that my lovely wife Gail made for me. It's got the orca there and the stick and rink there. Changes colors too, depending on what's in here. So it's kind of cool. And I'm in a good mood because tonight we're live streaming. It's me, Sean and Jake. It's NHL 21. We're gonna play threes instead of ones and fives. I think threes is the most exciting to watch. So we're gonna play a series of games, a uh, series of threes games, so that should be a lot of fun. And I wanna thank you for all your feedback to my Ask Me Anything vlog yesterday. And before I get to training camp talk, I also wanna give a shout out to the four clubs I have coming up, um, doing division previews as I tweeted about yesterday. Tomorrow I'm previewing the North Division with John of Hot Take Hockey. On Wednesday night, it's the West Division with Nick of Twisted Rister Hockey. Then on Thursday, it's the East Division with Kim, Isles Girl, and then uh, winding up on Friday, Central Division with Gravite, uh, Nathan. So I'm looking forward to all those. Um, and I'm gonna do all those as, as premieres at 10 p.m. So you can be chatting live with me as we roll those videos out. Okay, let's talk about training camp. A lot of good things to talk about. It's only day one of training camp on the ice. So we shouldn't get too caught up in line combinations, deep pairings, who's skating in which group, because we know those things can switch on a daily basis. But we've been starving for hockey for the past few months, so we're gonna talk about some of those combos right now. And I give props to all the media members that are actually there tweeting all these things out so people like me can talk about them on video. So the three I go to a lot are, well, I should make it four, but the three I used to always go to are Thomas Drantz, Jeff Patterson, and Brendan Batchelor, and then I'd add in Chris Faber and David Quadrelli in that mix as well. So um, according to them, these are kind of some of the, the lines that we see in the, the who's playing with who. So the, they separate the skaters into two groups, and in group one, in group A, I should say, um, it, the, a lot of lines together of, of Horvat, sorry, not Pedersen, Miller, and Besser. And then when I looked at this group, I, I, it's kind of like it was the first and fourth lines were in group A and the second and third lines were in group B because Horvat and Pearson were in group B. But then they put together a line of Sutter between Mott and Vertanen. And to me, that line's intriguing because I've always said Mott can go from the fourth to the third line. We don't know where Vertanen's going to end up. And then Sutter played well in the playoffs last year. So that could be a third line of Sutter, Mott and Vertanen. Then you have Gajevic with Grayovac and Lockwood and then Beagle and Erickson as extra skaters or extra forwards because you had 11 forwards there. And then on D, the biggest one is you have Edler with Schmidt. So Hughes isn't in that pairing, isn't in that group, and neither is Myers. It's Edler and Schmidt together. Then Ben and Rathbone or Rathbone and Ben left to right. Riesbra and Sautner and then Jet Wu is the extra. And then Braden Holtby and Mikey DiPietro are in this group as goaltenders. So I think the two things that come out of here, well, three things, is the lotto line at least is starting the training camp together. You have Sutter between Mott and Vertanen, which could be a really intriguing line. Uh, speedsters and Mott and Vertanen on the wings. And then, uh, you know, a reliable face-off man and defensive person in, actually Mott's good defensively too, but in Sutter. And then Edler with Schmidt. And I'm going to talk about the defense pairings at the end of this vlog to, to wind things up. So that that's uh, fascinating to me or not fascinating, quite interesting to me that they have Edler with Schmidt. So that maybe means um, they're saving either Myers to play with Hughes or Hammock to play with Hughes. And I'll talk about that in at the end of this video. Then that means in group B, they're gonna skate not till 12 p.m. And then it's everyone else. The notables in that group are Quinn Hughes, are Ole Ulevi, Bo Horvat, Tanner Pearson, Tyler Myers, Niels Hoglanders in that group, Adam Gaudet, Thatcher Demko and Anton Roussel. So you have guys that could play on the third line, like Gaudette, like maybe Hoglander, maybe McEwen. Then you have guys that could play in the second line, obviously of Horvat and Pearson. Oh, sorry, Roussel can also play in that third line. So what this tells me actually is a couple things, is maybe they're gonna give Sven Berchi a chance to skate with Horvat and Pearson to at least at least today. So that could, that could be something we see is, is again, Berchi reunited with Bo Horvat, with Tanner Pearson. 
And then I guess the other thing to take out of this is Hughes and Myers are in this group. Um, so yeah, looking forward to see um, those line combinations tweeted out maybe um, just around around noon time. So that should be good. I'm looking forward to to uh, you know seeing the, that news come out a little bit later. Um, but the one thing I guess um, we, yeah we don't want to get too caught up in what's happening in uh, you know in in day one of training camp. But but I think the the main thing I do want to end off talking about is, is the defense pairings. And we're hearing about Travis Hamannick. We know we we've been talking a lot about the fact that he signed to a PTO that they're waiting to put Michael Freeland on LTIR and a salary of 3.5 million. So then um, the Canucks right now, they're one and a half million dollars over the cap. You subtract Michael Freeland's three and a half and then the Canucks will basically have about $2 million to play with. I don't think all 2 million is going to Hamannick. I Everything I hear uh, from guys like Chris Faber, from Rick Dollywell, is that it's gonna be probably around $1 million. It could be as low as 800 grand, could be as high as 1.2 mil. Uh, but let's say a million right in the middle, it's going to be about a million dollars for a year for Hamannick. And then that alt, that that substantially deepens our blue line. I don't worry about, oh, that means you'll levy or Rathbone or or more likely on the right side, Chatfield or, or Rafferty, that's going to hurt their chances. That's okay. We want competition. We want competition in camp and we want, we want competition for spots. So the last thing I want to talk about is... What would your parents look like? Let's presume Travis, Travis Hamannick makes the team. So we know we have the big five now of Hughes, Schmidt, Edler, Myers, and Hamannick. And then you got to wind, you got to fill that out with uh, either Ben, a Yolevi, a Rathbone, a Rafferty, or a Chatfield. Now, my original thought was thinking, oh, Hamannick's going to be on the third pair and right side. So you're going to go Hughes with Myers, Edler with Schmidt, or even if you want to go crazy, and I think it would be exciting, Hughes, Schmidt, Edler, Myers, and then either Ben on the left side. Remember, Ben can play both sides. You can either Ben, Yolevi, or Rathbone as a left shot D uh, with, or left side D with Hamnick on the right as a third pairing. So that was my first thought, right? Again, and let's say let's say you split up Schmidt and, and Hughes. So I was thinking it was going to be Hughes, Myers, and their Schmidt, which we saw today, this morning. And then and then let's say for argument's sake, Ben or, or Yolevi with Hamnick. But then others are saying, wait, if, if Hamnick is kind of like Chris Tanev and that he's a right shot D, um, sturdy defensively, kills penalties, blocks shots, maybe a little bit injury prone, maybe a little bit past his prime, but still he can play solid stay at home D. If he slides into Chris Tanev's spot, then now you have uh, actually way more options. You go Hughes Hamnick, right? Hamnick basically replacing Chris Tanev. And then you have a really uh, intriguing, if you keep Schmidt on the right, you could go Edler Schmidt, which again we saw this morning, and now your Myers is on your third pairing on the right side, and then again it's either Ben or Yulevi or Rathbone, or you could put Schmidt on the left side, and then you go Hughes Hamnick, Schmidt Myers, and then Edler on the third pairing, and then now you're looking at a Ben, a Rafferty, or Chatfield, the right guys, the the guys that can play on the right side. So what's really interesting is if Hamnick is paired with Hughes. Then where does Schmidt play on the left side or the right side? On the left side, it's crazy. Like you'd have then your your left side D would be Hughes, Schmidt, and Edler. That's got to be among the best left sides in the entire league. Hughes, Schmidt, Edler. You put Schmidt on the right side, then you have the the chance of playing Hughes and Schmidt together. So I I, I think all those options are really fascinating. And it didn't even I didn't even think of the Hamnick in for Tanev thing playing with Hughes until I started to kind of see the guys' names, you know, kind of written down and listed out on paper. So that will be something interesting to watch. But unfortunately, Travis Havnick's going to do seven days of quarantining after arriving here from Winnipeg. So we won't see him on the ice until Monday the 11th or Tuesday the 12th, just one or two days ahead of the Canucks' first game on Wednesday night, uh, January the 13th, to open the season. So a lot of questions, but I'm excited. You can tell I'm excited. I was working from home this after, this morning, got to go to the office now, but it gave me a chance to record this vlog and not rush through it from my car. So there we go. Let me know, Canucks fans, how excited are you that the Canucks are back on the ice? Do you read anything into these matchups and these, these combinations on the first day of training camp? And I guess the biggest question is, what will your D pairings look like? I've given you about five or six different options, but what would, ideally would be your three defense pairings? Leave a comment below. I love to read, react, and reply as always. Thank you for your support. This channel has grown a lot over the past week or so as I beat up the channel a little bit and, and doing more collabs and trying new things. And one of those new things or a fun thing will be the stream tonight 
at 10 p.m. as I always do on Monday night. But tonight, it's not me answering questions. Well, it might be me answering questions while I'm trying to play NHL 21 with my two sons. So make sure you join me tonight at 10. And make sure you subscribe if you'd like to. Like this video if you'd like to. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other, and have a great day. God bless, and go Canasco.